Okay, uh, immutable array buffers for stage two. Uh, last meeting, uh, we got to stage one. So to recap, um, the gray here is the existing array buffer API, and the proposal would add um, at least these two um, uh, features to the existing um, API, a transfer to immutable method that returns an array buffer that has the immutability flavor, and then a immutable accessor that is true uh, if, you know, uh, exactly for those uh, array buffers that have the uh, immutable flavor. Um, and the immutable flavor would be in addition to the existing, you know, detached and resizable, etc. flavors. The, um, the behavior of the immutable flavor of array buffer is that um, uh, it would, its immutable accessor, of course, would say true, it's not detachable, or it's not detached, and it's not detachable. Um, it's not resizable, uh, its max byte length is the same as the byte length. Uh, and then of the methods, uh, the slice method, which is a query only method, would still work, would still be there, but the other methods which would cause a change, uh, uh, including, the, uh, including all the transfer methods, uh, would throw an error rather than um, uh, do what's normally expected. Status update. Uh, at the uh, last plenary, the uh, public comments were all positive, but I additionally got many uh, uh, private positive comments. I don't recall receiving any negative comments or objections, uh, so if anybody here did give me some negative feedback, uh, please remind me. Um, the As of the last plenary, the spec text was already uh, what I consider to be stage two quality. Uh, thanks uh, to Richard Gibson for that. Uh, and uh, since the last plenary, uh, Modable has done a full implementation of the proposal. Uh, as of the last plenary, there were some open questions, uh, and I will now, which I will now go into, and tell you what our preference is on the resolution of these open questions, uh, but in each case, ask for the uh, feedback um, uh, today from the committee. Okay, so the existing transfer methods, uh, transfer and tra transfer to fixed length, both have a length, an optional length parameter. Um, the transfer to immutable as presented at the last plenary, had no optional length parameter. Uh, and the question is, should it have one? And there's an argument from orthogonality in each direction. Um, the uh, argument from orthogonality to omit the length parameter is that the um, composition of slice and transfer to immutable, or um, or the combination of an existing transfer followed by a transfer to immutable, already composes the orthogonal um, issues of changing the length and making something immutable. And because transfer transfers, uh, it would not interfere with uh, being zero copy. Um, and it just kind of keeps um, separate jobs being done by separate methods. Um, uh, the argument from, ortho from orthogonality for including the length parameter is that we've got three, we would have then three different transfer methods and each would, and each independently has a length parameter that can be present or absent. Um, and you just have the orthogonal combination of whatever the method does and whatever you ask for in the parameter. Uh, and so I think on orthogonality, it is a wash. 
Uh, I'm advocating now, I've changed my mind on this, I'm advocating now that we include the length parameter because it minimizes the damage from surprise. What I mean by that is that either decision might surprise some programmers. A programmer that expects that there is no optional length parameter and doesn't use it um, in a language in which there is an optional length parameter experiences no damaging surprise. A programmer who does expect there is an optional length parameter in a language that does not have one um, uh, might provide the, uh, an optional length argument uh, and then they don't even get an error. The language just proceeds to then do something that deviates from their expectation. And, and, and silent deviation from programmer expectation is very dangerous. So on, that, on those grounds, I now favor the length parameter. Okay. Should we add a zero copy slice method? Uh, right now we've got um, slice and transfer to immutable, and they can be composed to get an immutable slice. Um, but, you know, for, so in the example code down here, if we have an immutable buffer and we want an immutable slice into the buffer, we can just take a slice and then do a transfer to immutable on the slice. But this technique for getting the effect is very hard to make zero copy. Uh, so the proposal uh, would be to add a new method, slice to immutable, whose semantics is exactly the same as this line of code you see down here, but with the implementation expectation that um, the new array buffer is a zero copy window into the original array, array buffer. Okay, um, uh, Niccolo, I think it was, um, raised the issue about whether the accessor property for determining the flavor of an array buffer should be named mutable or immutable. Uh, in general, there is a principle that um, uh, Boolean should have positive names so that the negation of the Boolean does not read like a double negative. Um, if, if, we called, if we said the accessor was immutable, then in order to say if mutable, you'd have to say if not immutable, which just seems much more complicated than saying if mutable. Um, the argument, uh, the, the contrary argument for immutable uh, uh, is that there's a general convention of Booleans defaulting to false. And in particular, the really nice thing about that is that uh, Absence is falsy. So um, code like if buff dot immutable uh, in a if run on a system before immutable array buffers are in the language and therefore without the accessor uh, would do the right thing. It would um, uh, be falsy, uh, indicating correctly that the buffer in question is mutable. Uh, so uh, so both of these are reasonable pros and cons. Altogether, uh, I'll just again speak for myself rather than necessarily for all the champions, but I favor immutable uh, as the answer because of the, um, uh, the compatibility with absence uh, I find compelling. And then um, there's um, uh, this complex set of open questions uh, all of which are about what the precise order of operations should be in the specification. And in the happy path, when everything just does what it's supposed to do, uh, this doesn't matter very much. The, the consequence at the end of the happy path is pretty much the same. Uh, where the order of operations um, matters, and where some of these other questions um, al also explicitly matter, is um, when you're not on the happy path, uh, the most important issue is um, uh, does a failure cause a throw or does it fail silently 
um, doing nothing. And the um, and there's a unpleasant uh, precedent in the existing array buffer system standard that we need to live with as we resolve this issue, which is uh, some of the things that you would expect to throw already in the language, such as reading a field of a detached array buffer or setting a field of a detached array buffer, instead fail silently. And there's a long history about why that is. Array buffers are trying to get grandfather into the language, uh, some, um, something that uh, were pre was a de facto standard that was um, uh, to um, that we need that the de jure standard need to be compatible with. But however we got there, uh, we're there. So um, uh, so we can't change those cases. So altogether, our um, position is that especially for, for other subtler issues of, you know, ob observable consequences of order operations, of or order of operations. Um, overall, we want to drive the answer to all of these questions by implementer feedback. Um, uh, because uh, if it's easy for an, imp for an implementation to implement uh, something that follows one particular order of operations and not others, uh, that probably is the dominant issue rather than, than any semantic issue. However, uh, there, there is a semantic uh, bias that I certainly want to inject in that exploration, which is when in doubt, throw. So the modable excess implementation, if you assign to an in-range field, i.e. A, a field that is an indexed property of the array buffer, um, uh, the, or rather, you don't assign to fields of array buffers, you assign to, to fields of typed arrays that, 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 um, that window onto array buffers. Um, if you assign into an index field, uh, then it throws, if you assign outside the index field, then it does what it does now. Um, and the modable excess implementation, which is the only source of implementation feedback so far, uh, does do that, but the modable excess implementation is not optimized for speed, it's optimized for space and ROMability. Um, uh, so um, uh, we, we still need feedback from the high speed engines. And uh, that is it for the presentations. And as agreed, I will now stop recording.